everyone, and welcome to my new series on the Pontic Kingdom and the Mithridatic Wars. With the first video discussing the prelude to the first Mithridatic War and how it came about. So let's get into it. Mithridates, a new ruler who ascended to the Pontic throne with great ambitions to curb the expansion of Rome and save the Greek world from its seemingly at the time inevitable demise. He wanted to focus on expansion right at the very beginning, and unlike the previous rulers of Pontus, who favored being more friendly with Rome, he would do quite the opposite. He would end up being very aggressive towards the Romans. And so here is the heartland of the kingdom of Pontus. And while I'm not going to be able to change the land that Pontus controls in this map exactly the way that uh, Mithridates did, I will still be able to discuss based off of what I am what I can see here. So if I go to this map it makes it a little bit easier. So as you can see to the north it's completely under the fog of war in this game which means we don't have political jurisdiction here and we have no idea what is going on in these areas and that is really what it was like for Pontus. They didn't know what was going on in those areas except for the fact that the kingdom of the Cimmerian Bosphorus is here, the Scythians are up there, and the kingdom of Colchis is over here, but that's pretty much it as far as what's actually happening and what is there is unknown until the time of Mithridates. So the situation that Mithridates faces right off the bat is that a lot of his neighbors are Roman allies. Two in particular are Cappadocia and Bithynia. And this second one over here will be the spark that ignites the first Mithridatic War. The Galatians by now, by the time of Mithridates, would have been just an insignificant power compared to what they were back in the time that this game is showing, and Sinop actually would have also been controlled by Pontus at this time, and so would Trapezos. So, Trapezos being over here. So, Mithridates begins his expansion by going up into the unknown north lands, going up into the barbarian lands, the lands that are far from the reach of Rome, so Rome doesn't have any say in what he does, and that way he can gain a bunch of power by expanding into this region without having to deal with Rome yet, until he becomes powerful enough to deal with Rome. So the first kingdom he takes is Colchis, over here, and then he keeps going up, and he takes the entirety of the Bosporan Kingdom, and he very impressively defeats the Scythians who are living up here, who attempt to take him down and drive him out of the region, but to no avail, and he signs a pact and an alliance with them to keep the peace in the north of his kingdom, as well as have the Scythians as allies in his future conquests, and he would employ many, many, many Scythian uh, warriors and hordes in his campaigns that he would launch in the future to the west against Rome. So all that is great. He builds a Black Sea Empire stretching all the way from Pontus and Sinope up here, which is a Greek city-state under the control of Pontus, all the way from here, all the way up and around the Black Sea over here, and encompassing this entire region up here in the north, which is the Kingdom of the Cimmerian Bosphorus, now part of the Pontic Black Sea Empire. And various Greek city-states on the coast of uh, the west of the Black Sea. 
too. So he builds that empire. And what he does next is where Rome finally starts paying attention to what's going on. And that is when he starts putting his foot into the Cappadocians business. And the way he does this is he moves against Ariathres the Sixth, an ally of Rome, king of Cappadocia, by assassinating him. And the person who assassinates him is this man named Gordius, who is an ally of Mithridates inside the Cappadocian kingdom. He assassinates Ariathres the Sixth, and Mithridates' sister Laodice becomes the regent for her son to rule the kingdom, who's named Ariathres, which ties the kingdom of Cappadocia kind of to the Pontic Empire, kind of, but they are still an independent kingdom. And Gordian would play a huge role in this entire drama that's happening between the Pontic Kingdom and the Cappadocian Kingdom. Then he starts putting his foot into Bithynia's business, and his sister Laodice marries Nicomedes III of Bithynia. Nicomedes III, the king of Bithynia, decides to invade Cappadocia, basically ruining this relationship, and he occupies Cappadocia. So Bithynia invades Cappadocia, occupies it. Like I said, this Galatian state in the middle, it would have been really not much, pretty much done by now. But in the time of this game, they were still a great power, which is why they kind of have big, significant holding right here. But just ignore this presence on the map. Just imagine that he was able to easily get over to the Cappadocia, because Cappadocia was actually like half of this, and Bithynia was pretty much the other half, and Pontus was some up here, so there was no Galatia anymore here. He went down here and he took over Cappadocia, just takes over the country. Mithridates drives him out with his own army, with the Pontic army, invades Cappadocia and drives him out. And Mithridates makes himself patron of his nephew Ariathres, who is the son of his sister, going to be the king of Cappadocia. But Ariathres refused to welcome Gordius back, and Mithridates ends up just executing him. And he places his son, also named Ariathres, on the Cappadocian throne with Gordian as his guardian. So it's like his nephew refuses to welcome his supporter and he just executes his nephew and puts his son on the throne. So we've already got some dynastic family dramas going on here and it's getting pretty hot. So next, Nicomedes appeals to Rome for aid. So Nicomedes, seeing all of this and seeing that the kingdom that he just conquered was just retaken and the atrocity that, in his eyes, that Mithridates committed to his own nephew favoring his son instead, he appeals to Rome and he asks for Mithridates to have to relinquish his hold on Pamphlagonia and Cappadocia. Well, Cappadocia, we know what that is. So Mithridates now owns Cappadocia because of what he did. And he kind of owns it as as uh, his client state. Pamphlagonia is kind of this entire area up in here. It's mostly the area that Sinop controls here in this game. This is Pamphlagonia, basically. It's also sort of like a little bit in Bithynia, but it's mostly just this purple area up here, a little bit chipped off 
on the north of this Galatian territory. And so he says, if Nicomedes says, make him give up all of this and all of this. Well, giving up all of this is just completely out of the question. This has been a Pontic holding for a while. And there's just no way that, like, Rome is going to be able to make him peacefully give up Pamphlagonia without insulting Pontus pretty much as much as Rome could possibly insult Pontus. So they avoid doing that, but they do install Ario Bizarnius the I on the throne of Cappadocia. This effectively drives Mithridates' son out of the land and drives Mithridates' control back to Pontus and out of Cappadocia. Mithridates obviously doesn't like this, so he encourages Tigranes of Armenia. Armenia is this kingdom right here. This is actually Armenia, controlling all this land down here. And if we go into here, we can actually see that like all three of these cities are Armenia. But the Fog of War has this half covered as we don't see specific information on what's going on. So go back out to this map and he encourages Tigranes, the great of Armenia, current king of Armenia, to invade and conquer Cappadocia. He does. This is when Rome starts getting worried about what's going on and worried that this could develop into something potentially dangerous. So they contact this brilliant, although extremely brutal, Roman general named Sulla in Silesia, or Kilikia, whatever you want to call it, but this land right here is what that is. He's here stopping a bunch of pirates from doing pirate business and giving a bunch of trouble to everybody. He's, and once he finishes hunting down these pirates, he gets orders from Rome to move on Cappadocia. He moves on to Cappadocia, and he reinstalls Ariobazarnes on the throne and kicks Tigranes back to Armenia. He has a few difficulties at the beginning that I don't currently have a lot of information about, but the outcome is that he installs Ariobazarnes on the throne, and Everything seems all well and good. Nicomedes III is in Bithynia, ruling his own country. Ario Bizarnes is back with Cappadocia being an independent ally of Rome. And Pontus is just hanging back with Mithridates contemplating his next move. And Tigranes is in Armenia. So everything seems like it's kind of stable here. But all of a sudden... Nicomedes III dies, and his son Nicomedes IV comes to the throne. But during these times of succession and kingdoms, it's always difficult because the new king usually ha takes some time to be able to establish himself and and uh, kind of legitimize his hold over the kingdom before everything becomes uh, safe and secure again. So it's always during these times that people who see the opportunity to overtake the kingdom or create a new regime or do whatever they're going to do, they usually pick this kind of time to do it. And that's exactly what happens. So his half-brother, Socrates, Crestos, is a supporter of Mithridates in the kingdom of Bithynia, and what he does is he overthrows and drives Nicomedes IV out of Bithynia. And Nicomedes IV, by the way, where does he go? Well, where do you think? He goes straight to the city of Rome. So he travels from Bithynia all the way to the city of Rome, right here. 
he reaches Rome and he says, he cries to them and he says, Mithridates just took my kingdom from me. And Nicomedes the fourth, by doing this, has Rome worried to the point where, okay, so first Mithridates is picking on Cappadocia and constantly messing up around with Cappadocia, but now he's picking on Bithynia and messing around with Bithynia. The thing is, if he controls Bithynia, that means he has access straight across the Bosphorus into Greece. He has access to this strait right here that is the path from Asia to Europe. So it looks like Mithridates is planning on probably taking over all of Greece in the future, and Rome was definitely right in their suspicion. And so this brings Rome in and sparks the first Mithridatic War, which I will be covering in my next video. I wanted to make that in a separate video because I feel like I need one video to go into extreme detail on all the little things that are going to be happening in that war. But so, as it is, Mithridates controls all of this territory around here, and like I said, the Greek city is on the coast over here. He controls all of this, and he controls Bithynia, thanks to Socrates. Not the Socrates you're thinking about, but the half-brother of Nicomedes, Socrates. And... He still doesn't control Cappadocia, though. He kind of gave up on that for the time being. Cappadocia is in the hands of Ario Bizarnes I and is an independent Roman ally, but as we will see in the future, maybe not for long. So, thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please leave a like. And please leave a comment with your thoughts on the video and this new layout and format of me recording and talking about this stuff and the map and everything. Just leave your thoughts about all of that and what you think about this compared to stuff that I've done in the past. And also I welcome you to go check out any other videos that I have made in the past because every like and every comment does a lot. And of course, if you like the content and you want to see more, please hit the subscribe button below the video. And again, thank you for attending this brief but interesting lecture on the prelude to the First Mithridotic War. I will see you guys in the next video.